G'day everyone, today I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about your Air Force to get started in Hoi 4. Have you found yourself wondering what these weird yellow dotted circles mean? Why are there so many different numbers scattered around the place? What is an air wing? Well, wonder no more. But firstly, if you enjoy this guide, please consider dropping and like and, and subscribe. It really helps me out in bringing these videos to you. Also, let me know in the comments if you've learnt anything, and also, as always, we have a bonus tip at the end, so stick around for that. So, as you may already know, your Air Force is made up of a variety of different types of aircraft, which are organised into air wings. You can use your Air Force to either combat enemy aircraft or bomb enemy units and infrastructure, which you do by assigning them a mission in an air region. Your Air Force is one of the key branches of your armed forces in the game, so it's important to understand how it works and how to use it well. So firstly, let's look at how to view your Air Force and assign the missions. And yes, we are back with Italy, my favourite beginner country. So press F3 or the little air view button in the bottom right of your screen. Uh, this will show you the different air regions as well as different airports and the air wings stationed in them as well as their strength. Once you're at war, it will also show you your air supremacy in each region as well as any missions that you're running. You might notice that the air regions match the naval regions in the seas, and this is by design, which we will touch on a bit later. It's worth noting though that on land, the air regions don't align with any state or country borders usually, so keep an eye on that when you're covering your front lines. So, if we have a look at Italy here, you can see the different airports as shown by these black and white icons and these ones here. If you click on one, you can also see the uh, number next to them, which shows that airport's capacity and, like here, the current number of planes that are currently stationed there. An airport's capacity will max out at 2,000 planes, and it can't be increased beyond that regardless of how many extra airports that you build. So if you have a large air force, you might need to build multiple airports in states close to each other. Now, if we have selected this airport here, you can see in the top left the info panel, and that will show you the different air wings that are stationed here. So if you hover over each of these pictures, it will show you the aircraft type. So this one is a tactical bomber, these ones are fighters. You can also see the air wing strength, as well as any missions that they've been assigned. So currently, these air wings don't have any mission, so they are just standing by. At the start of the game, it's generally a good idea to bring your air force together to organise them. The easiest way, in my opinion, to do this is to select the air overview button in the top right, and then hold shift and select all of your air wings that show up on the left, and then just right click on a central airport to move them all there. Now, when we unpause the game, you will see all these yellow lines pop up, uh, showing where the plane wings are going from and to, as well as their progress, as shown by the little plane icons along that line. Of course, the further away your destination airport is, the longer the planes will take to get there, so move your planes where you want them to go before declaring war, if you can. All of our air wings are currently in this airport here. So to organize them, just select the airport, which automatically selects all of the wings that are stationed here. And then you want to click this button, which will merge all of the air wings together. Now it's worth noting, you can only merge wings of the same aircraft type. Uh, for example, you can't mix fighters and naval bombers into the same wing. When you build a new airport, the capacity will increase in increments of 200 planes. So the most straightforward way to organize them is in mul multiples of 200. For example, if we click on our fighters, uh, this will open up the reinforcement limit, so we can actually increase the capacity of this air wing. So if we bump this up to 400, and then select that individual air wing by clicking on its line, and then select this button here, the split button, and now you've got two air wings of 200 capacity. And just go through if you're following along with the video and do that for all of your air wings. As you can see now, we have a bunch of air wings that are under strength. Like any other equipment and any other unit, you need to build equipment to supply them. So the good news is, once you build your new aircraft, the new planes will automatically reinforce your air wings provided there is space. Once your air wings are full, you can increase their capacity and split them and then the new air wings will continue to grow. 
Another important factor to consider with your air force is their experience level, which you can see on the side here. Much like with your armies, your pilots are more effective the more experience they have, and you can train them up to level 3. Once you've selected all of your air wings, hold left shift, left shift, hold the select the on the left side of your shift board, left hold shift, and then click on the exercise button, and then they'll train until level 3 and then stop. Planes will use fuel anytime they're conducting a mission, including the exercise one, so to make sure you don't run out, only exercise them till level 3. You might have seen before when training your planes that there is a wide range of missions that your planes can undertake. From left to right, you've got air superiority, close air support or CAS, interception, strategic bombing, naval strike, kamikaze strike, and port strike. Don't worry too much about the last two. The most important missions that you'll be using in your playthrough will be the air superiority mission and the close air support missions. Air superiority is carried out by your fighters only. On this mission, they'll shoot down any enemy plane they see, fighters or bombers. This is the main mission that you'll use, however, if the enemy has a significantly larger air force than you, you might want to put your fighters on the interception mission, where they'll only target enemy bombers, not fighters, and they'll only make a sortie out of the airport when there are enemy planes in the region. It can save you fuel as well, uh, however, this mission doesn't provide air supremacy in a region, whereas the air superiority mission does. Why that's important, we'll cover in a bit. The next mission to know is the close air support one, which is carried out by your bombers. This specifically targets enemy land units, so enemy divisions, and having good air support can make or break your playthrough. You also have the naval bombing mission, which is another main one you'll use. That's carried out on sea regions to target enemy ships. Finally, the strategic bombing mission will target enemy factories, infrastructure, and other buildings. This can wear down and weaken your enemy over time, as well as distract their air force, taking them away from the front. To assign your air wings a mission, select them, the ones that you want to give the mission to, and then right click on the air zone you want them to operate in, and then left click on the mission that you want them to run. And if we unpause here, you will see this region turn green. Keep in mind the yellow dotted circle here shows the range of the selected air wing. The more of that air region is inside the circle, the more effective your planes will be. So you might need to move your air wings around to increase their effectiveness. Another way to manage your air wings, which is a bit easier, is just to assign them to an army. So to do so, you can select the air wings that you want to assign and then your army groups will show up down the bottom and you can just left click on this little icon here to attach them to your army. Now, you also will need to select the missions that you want them to run, uh, but now basically they'll just follow your army group around. Let me have a look here. So they're moving down to Africa to support them. They'll just follow your army around uh, and run those missions in the region that your army is fighting in. Your air force is really just there to support your army and navy. You want your own bombers to be attacking enemy divisions and ships, but you also need to protect them from being shot down, and your enemy is going to bomb you too, so your fighters can protect your own planes, as well as try to stop or slow down the enemy ones. That's pretty much the idea of the Air Force. If we have a look at the air section of your research, you can see all the different plane types. To be honest, if you want to go really low effort and straightforward with your Air Force, just build fighters and CAVs you can just get by with those. Some planes are more specialized for their role, however, such as the close air support or CAS for short, uh, your naval bombers and your strategic bombers. One way you can play is to have a mix of all these different types of aircraft in production and utilize them where they're best effective. Obviously, the CAS are best at the CAS mission, naval bombers at the naval bombing mission and strategic bombers at the strat bombing mission. Another method you can use is by only building the tactical bombers, which are sort of a jack of all trades, and if you click on it, you can actually see all the different missions that they can carry out, which is all of the bombing ones. They're not quite as effective as the specialty planes, but it is more simple to just build one plane class rather than building three and trying to manage that. You also, of course, have your fighters, which are really essential to protect your own bombers from the enemy and to shoot down the enemy planes. You can think of fighters as screens to your bombers, much as the same as you have screens for your capital ships in your navy. 
go check out my last naval guide video. Also, speaking of your navy, your aircraft carriers can't just take any planes on board. You'll see with these planes on the left side of the tree, the little icon in the top right of their icon there. Uh, this is the carrier variant of each plane. For example, to improve the quality of your carrier planes, you'll first need to research the standard technology and then research the carrier variant of that and then produce it. Your divisions will benefit greatly from the support of CAS and having air superiority in a region that your battles are taking place. If your air region is showing up red or greyed out like this, you need to move some fire to see it to combat the enemy planes. Your divisions will have a negative debuff if you lack air supremacy, as you can see the Ethiopians have. If you have the green here, the air supremacy on your side, your divisions will fight more effectively. That's pretty much the basics of the Air Force in Hearts of Iron 4. And now it's time for the bonus tip. If you're having a hard time shooting down all the enemy bombers with your fighters, try assigning your division a support AA company. They will target any enemy planes that are carrying out the CAS mission, and they are really good at it. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful and entertaining. And if you did, please leave a like and consider subscribing to see when I post new videos. I also stream on Twitch. My link is in the description, so please stop by and say good day, and I'll see you in the next one.